a series of videos on the fundamentals of pharmacokinetics. You will find these videos useful by themselves, but they are nevertheless best viewed alongside a textbook, Clinical Pharmacokinetics from the Beginning. It's available on Amazon and priced for a student budget. The textbook and these videos are themed around an imaginary drug called Pretendolone. Drug concentration time data are used to build a pharmacokinetic profile. If you want more information on how this works, see video 1 and introduction. Video 7a, the first of three videos on clearance. In this first video, we're going to look at the concept of clearance. Clearance is arguably the most important of the pharmacokinetic parameters, but it is also quite difficult to understand. So I hope these videos, in conjunction with the textbook, will help explain what clearance is and how it's applied. All the pharmacokinetic parameters we've looked at so far have been measured in plasma. Clearance can also be measured in plasma, but it can also be subcategorized as clearance in the organs associated with drug elimination. And as such, clearance provides information on the physiological processes involved in drug elimination. To explain what I mean, and in the tradition of these videos, we will build a model of clearance. In fact, you first saw a version of this, mid, of this model in video five, when we looked at absolute oral bioavailability. If you take a drug orally, it will go into the gastrointestinal tract. A portion of that drug is likely to be absorbed and the absorbed drug will enter the hepatic portal vein and then go to the liver. In our simplified model, there are then two options. The unchanged parent drug can go straight through the liver and enter plasma where it will circulate around the body. The other possibility is that the liver will metabolize the drug into a series of metabolites. I should mention at this point that there is another route of the drug into plasma. It can be directly injected. I mention this now because, as we'll see later, clearance is calculated from an intravenous dose. But back to the main theme of this model, we are going to have to have a look at metabolites and what we mean by that. And to do this, I'm going to use an example. Paracetamol, or acetaminophen, depend, depending on where you live in the world. Let's say you take an oral dose of paracetamol. It will enter the liver, and a good portion of the paracetamol will pass through the liver into the plasma, where it will circulate around the body. But over time, the liver will metabolize the paracetamol into a series of metabolites. The major metabolites of paracetamol are the glucuronide and sulfate conjugates. And then you have a range of minor metabolites which are related to a glutathione conjugate. If you want to know more about drug metabolism, there is a supplementary video on this channel about drug metabolism and transporters and some of the specifics of paracetamol metabolism is covered in that video. So if you wanted to know more then I would refer you to that video for further information. The detail of how the liver metabolizes paracetamol is not important to our current story. The key message is that drug is removed from circulation by metabolism. In this case, 
It's the liver metabolizing the drug, and so we call it hepatic metabolism. Our concern is entirely with the fate of the unchanged parent drug. Going back to our model, we can now focus on the unchanged parent drug circulating in plasma. The blood is filtered by the kidneys and the kidneys will remove that drug into urine where it is excreted. This is known as renal excretion. So to summarise, in respect to the liver and kidneys, there are two ways in which a drug can be extracted from the bloodstream, either by hepatic metabolism or by renal excretion. I did say previously that this is a simplified model, so we can just build things around the concept of clearance. So it's probably just worth mentioning that the liver and kidneys are quantitatively the most important organs in the extraction of drug, but other organs can be in involved as well. For example, the, the lungs can remove volatiles. Also, the liver can remove drug into bile. Bile is another route out of the liver. In general, however, this involves the formation of relatively high molecular mass metabolites. And so for the purpose of our model, we can include biliary excretion into drug metabolism. In fact, the paracetamol glutathione conjugates are an example of this process. And finally, uh, metabolism can occur in other organs. The kidneys can metabolize a drug to some extent, or even the wall of the GI tract, but generally hepatic metabolism does predominate. Having considered the principal organs of drug removal, being the liver and the kidneys, let's now con continue to build our model around some generic drug removing organ. This could be the liver, it could be the kidneys, it could even be the lungs removing volatiles. The blood will take the drug to the organ of elimination. And of course, it will also be the blood that carries the drug out of this organ. Now obviously, blood flows continuously through the organ, but for the purposes of our model, we are going to consider it as a series of discrete passes. So the drug goes through the organ, one pass after another. And with each pass, the organ extracts some fraction of the drug from blood. So for example, if it was the liver, that would extract it by metabolism. If this organ were the kidneys, it would extract into urine. Let's just say, for example, this organ extracts 20%, that is 0.2 as a fraction, of the drug for every pass of the blood through the organ. So for each pass, the organ is extracting a fraction, 0.2, from this organ. Now let's just add some additional factors onto our model. CA is the drug concentration in the blood entering the organ, and CV is the concentration of the drug in the blood exiting the organ. CV is therefore lower than CA by the fraction extracted from the blood. And that fraction extracted from the blood is known as the extraction ratio, otherwise known as E. And the equation for calculating E is shown there. Let's look at this equation in a, a little bit more detail. To do so, I'm just going to pop it up here in the corner and give ourselves some room. Firstly, it is a ratio. So being a ratio, it has no units. It is a measure of how efficiently 
The organ is removing the drug for each pass of blood through the organ. It ranges from zero, where no drug is extracted, to one where all the drug has been extracted. However, don't forget that elimination is still first order and hence exponential. So that model looks fine, but actually there is a missing factor. And to explain that, let's put some numbers on our model. Let's say that the concentration of the drug in blood going into the organ is one milligram per litre. The extraction ratio is 0.5. And therefore, some fairly trivial arithmetic will tell you that the concentration of the drug in blood coming out of the organ is 0 0.5 milligrams per litre. Let's add something else to this. Let's add the blood flow. If we say the blood flow is one litre per hour, then one milligram of the drug goes into the organ every hour. And that means that half a milligram of drug is extracted per hour. But if the blood flow is two litres an hour, then two milligrams of drug goes into the organ per hour and one milligram of drug is extracted per hour. So this means that the missing factor is blood flow. And that brings us to clearance. Because blood flow, depicted by Q, multiplied by the extraction ratio equals clearance. The blood flow has units of volume per time, for example, litres per hour. The extraction ratio is a ratio, so it has no units. And therefore, the units of clearance are volume per time, such as litres per hour. You may see this definition of clearance, the volume of blood cleared of drug per unit time. Personally, I've never really liked that definition because I think in isolation it is not very descriptive. But in terms of the information that I've just given you, perhaps that definition now makes a little more sense. Let's consider the relationship between clearance and blood flow. So as we've just said, blood flow multiplied by the extraction ratio equals clearance. But we know that the extraction ratio cannot be greater than one. And therefore clearance cannot be greater than the blood flow through the organ. So if we take a healthy adult, Apatic blood flow is around 90 litres an hour and renal blood flow is around 60 litres an hour. So that means that apatic clearance is limited to around 90 litres an hour and renal clearance is limited to around 60 litres per hour. Now, having said all that, I do need to make a clarification just for completeness. As will be explained in the next video, we will measure clearance in plasma, and that is the most common way of doing it. But in this video, we have discussed clearance in terms of blood flow. And in fact, you can separate blood clearance from plasma clearance. They aren't necessarily the same thing. If we look at extraction ratio, the extraction ratio concerns blood, not plasma. And so to be more accurate, we should say that blood clearance equals the extraction ratio multiplied by the blood flow. Now, if you want to calculate the extraction ratio and you only have the clearance in plasma, which is the most commonly expressed value, then you've got to convert the plasma clearance into the blood clearance. 
To do that requires knowledge of the blood plasma concentration ratio, which depends upon whether the drug binds to blood cells. Now, this is a whole new subject, and it is not one that we're going to cover in terms of the pretendalone videos, although I do kind of mention it in video 7C. The important thing as far as these videos are concerned is to remember that clearance is almost always measured in plasma. So if you see a value for clearance in the literature, unless it is otherwise defined, it is safe to assume that that was measured in plasma. So here we have the two main organs of drug elimination, liver and kidneys. And they're, they're sitting in plasma. Plasma blood is circulating through these organs. And as I've just said, you can measure clearance. You can measure total clearance from plasma. You can also have hepatic clearance from the liver and renal clearance from the kidneys. Now, if we assume that the liver and kidneys are the only organs involved in the elimination of the uh, drug, then the sum of hepatic and renal clearance will give you total clearance. How are these measured? Well, the measurement of clearance is the subject of the next video, video 7b. I would hope to see you there. Bye for now.